A very good morning everyone. So today's lecture is on diagnosis and treatment planning. And as a part of the learning outcomes, you should be able to describe the sequence of recording all the extraoral and the intraoral findings uh, during the diagnostic phase. Then you should be able to recall the diagnostic indices for partially dentulous and also the completely dented patients basis on the uh, diagnostic findings and also discuss the general and local factors that may influence the patient uh, prognosis. So with the uh, incidence of caries and periodontal diseases, the, the, uh, the need for extraction and uh, the need for uh, remove uh, or the need for removal of tooth has increased over a period of time and uh, and as the age uh, has been uh, uh, progressing the amount of masticatory forces and different factors systemically and uh, and locally have led to uh, extract uh, you know extraction of the teeth which would not help in uh, proper function and that uh, leads to a state of uh, partially uh, edentulous so uh, a condition so that is where uh, you, you look at replacement and uh, uh, looking at why is uh, replacement important you should you, you, we should understand the fact that the dental occlusion or uh, the the dental uh, uh, the the oral cavity it's not just a, st a static entity as i mentioned earlier uh, occlusion is a dynamic concept so uh, they, there is always a need for replacement that which is lost so that you not only uh, uh, have the form restored but also you try to uh, bring back that particular part uh, to function. So uh, you should understand that you know tooth loss is a loss of structural integrity and also with the loss of the tooth there is a completely different occlusal pattern that is found or a new equilibrium that is achieved so hence there is always a need for replacement so that when we are replacing you are trying to restore the things which are lost that is the uh, dynamic occlusion the the existing uh, or the previous occlusion that the patient had that will be repla replaced and also we should understand that once the tooth has been lost, there is always a pathological migration of the, the teeth that are adjacent to the edentulous areas into the uh, next, uh, in, into that, into the edentulous side. So hence, there is always a need for replacement or, or that might cause uh, drifting of the teeth and hence, and also a tilting of the tooth, which might not be healthy for that particular tooth, which is tilting. So, and a lot of other things that uh, have to be taken into consideration. And uh, so once the tooth has been lost, what are the different choices that you would have uh, when you are replacing those missing teeth? So now a uh, completely dental uh, patient walks into your uh, clinic, then you would suggest for a complete denture or you know you would suggest for an implant supported complete denture and uh, so on and so forth. So right, so uh, uh, if it's a partially uh, edentulous patient, so what are the first options that you have to give? Considering all the different treatment options, as of now, we have implants as the best treatment options that can be uh, restoring the function and the form uh, of the pre of the previous uh, existing previous condition or the existing uh, condition uh, condition of the oral cavity, so that. Uh, the patient can uh, restore his function uh, that is the mastication so implants have been the most successful kind of a uh, fixed kind of a treatment uh, for any uh, partially edentulous and also completely edentulous condition so implants you know uh, are the ones which are, are um, uh, they, they, they are placed or they are fixed into the bone and of course they're called as endosseous implants so that is one of the options and then if there is an adequate if there's inadequate bone quality and if there's no adequate support from the underlying residual ridge so the next option would be uh, uh, your um, you know fixed partial denture that is that is uh, applicable only if the abutment teeth are 
sound enough to receive a fixed partial processes. If the abutment teeth are not sound enough, then you would suggest a removable partial denture. Sometimes uh, when you are explaining to the patient about a fixed partial processes, the patients might not be comfortable about, uh, about uh, doing a selective grinding and preparation of healthy teeth. So in those cases, you can also suggest about resin bonded bridges, right? So if cost is a factor, uh, considering the expenditure that is involved in implants and dental, uh, you know, dental implants and fixed partial processes, the next option would be uh, uh, a, a, a cast chrome uh, a partial denture or your uh, cast partial dentures. So what is the need for uh, a treatment plan procedure? So for when, when you have a, there is always a sequence that needs to be followed. If you have a treatment in your mind, uh, that is just not enough, right? So you need to uh, restore the patient's dentition to good health with optimal function and appearance. So definitely, you need to uh, examine the patient. You need to uh, you need to look at uh, the condition of the patient, the oral cavity, the the teeth that are present, the number of teeth that are missing, the the, the abutment teeth, whether they are healthy in uh, condition or if there is any pathological uh, migration. So that is what you will have to look at. So the treatment planning, apart uh, apart from the diagnosis part, when the patient is moving into your OPD. Uh, the next part is your uh, treatment plan. That is the most important thing that uh, you need to uh, uh, you know, follow. So what is an ideal treatment plan? A treatment plan that achieves the best possible long-term outcomes for the patient while addressing all patient's uh, concerns and the active problem with the minimum necessary intervention. So uh, when, when you're speaking to the patient itself, when you're communicating to the patient, identification of patient needs, that is correcting the existing disease, then preventing the future disease, and also restoration of function and improvement of appearance. These are the four things that we need to keep in mind when we are communicating to the patient. So when the patient would come in and uh, address his or her chief complaint, this is what you need to relate with. That is, you have to identify uh, what is the condition and then you need to uh, correct the existing disease. If it's a periodontal condition, first that has to be treated. And you have to prevent any further, uh, uh, further, further advancement of the periodontal condition. Then if there is any endodontical, uh, endodontic uh, treatment that is required, then that has to be attended to. And also if there are uh, uh, multiple teeth missing then definitely the patient is deprived of the function and and if it is an anterior teeth that is missing improvement of appearance aesthetics is the most thing that you have to consider so treatment plan has to be uh, treated in uh, four phases you know that in phase one we have the diagnosis that is you can you take uh, the dental in the medical history then you examine the patient clinically and also send for investigations that is uh, uh, either uh, based on the need of the patient whether you want to do a small uh, IOPAR or if you want to do a detailed analysis then you could go for uh, uh, OPGs and then if the patient during your routine diagnosis you notice that there are any um, any complaints related to the temporomandibular joint then you might suspect that they must be a TMD so in those cases uh, those cases you might also uh, require uh, other extra oral radiography to to uh, uh, to rule out any other conditions that are existing then you would need diagnostic cast so that is why the uh, uh, we insist that you have to make a primary impression so once your primary impression is obtained you make the diagnostic cast and also if you can take diagnostic photographs then that is the best thing always having a record of the patient uh, right from the beginning till the end of your case. It not only helps you to keep record of the patient's uh, uh, treatment plan and the treatment uh, that you have continued for the patient, but it is also a record for you to, uh, keep, take, to keep a note of the different kinds of cases that you have been working on. So once you have obtained your cast, the next thing would be uh, your mounting and then you can do a diagnostic wax up and evaluate if it is an anterior tooth that is missing, then you can evaluate the aesthetics. Next, 
two, the next uh, uh, stage would be your phase two, that is your disease control. So in your disease control, as mentioned earlier, if required, a periodontal therapy, and if required, if caries is present, then endodontic therapy, and then if there is any overhanging restoration and uh, uh, any restoration which is causing irritation, then removal of existing restorations and caries control. Next one is your phase three, that is your restorative phase. So in your restorative phase, you have your crown lengthening. If there is a short clinical crown, uh, or uh, if you require, then implant surgery. If the patient is going to uh, say uh, okay for the implant surgery, then next would be any nasological technique. If, if that is your uh, full mouth rehabilitation, if it requires a full mouth approach, then you will have to do that. And uh, also, in cases where uh, you know that full mouth approach uh, uh, by giving fixed partial uh, processes, permanent fixed partial processes would not help. In such kind of cases, there is also a way of dealing with it that is using long term provisional restorations. And next thing is that uh, after using long term provisional restorations and the bite or the occlusion has been restored to normal, that is when your permanent restorations will come into picture. And finally is your maintenance phase. In your maintenance phase, always make sure that you pay, your patient will be recalled for every six months. You would uh, suggest for fluoride supplements and uh, always advise for proper oral hygiene and uh, ensure that the oral hygiene is being maintained. And um, also next, uh, counsel the patient about diet. Yeah, so once that has been done. So uh, in as a part of your phase one treatment, we are going to look at what is diagnosis and prognosis. We will look at everything in detail. So in your diagnosis, you would consider you would you would have to, uh, despite the fact that all of these would be taken in your uh, uh, oral medicine and radiology department. When the, if we are if we are fine if we are going to uh, be in an integrated uh, curriculum, then definitely we would have a single kind of a single approach. That is, you would do everything at one phase. Uh, in one particular uh, way and uh, you know you have to follow the same protocol like there's no separate departments and there's only a general dentistry department and every uh, thing has to be taken care of you so that is when uh, uh, that you will have to look at uh, the diagnosis so as a part of your diagnosis you must be uh, cautious to find out to ensure about uh, what is the past dental history of the patient and also what are the uh, medical uh, conditions that the patient has. So uh, sometimes the patients would like confidentiality. So you must assure the patient that uh, no information will be uh, revealed and that the patient should uh, ensure so that the patient and the doctor will not be at any risk if any uh, existing medical conditions are present. So while uh, uh, as a part after your uh, diagnosis, as you uh, move further into your clinical examination. So clinical examination, you uh, you will have to examine a lot of things when the patient uh, you uh, examine quadrant by quadrant and you have to examine for ev uh, for all the uh, anomalies, any caries present, any uh, periodontal issues, the gingival condition or any migration, any uh, false occlusion or uh, you know any uh, kind of a malocclusion that is present or if the patient is unable to bite and centric, any cross bite, everything has to be uh, considered. If it is a uh, partially edentulous condition, then you have to examine the residual bridge examine the oral mucosa the tongue the uh, temporomandibular joint uh, uh, the the the, pal uh, the you know any tenderness or any crepitation sounds everything has to be taken into consideration when you're doing the clinical examination so after you after a thorough clinical examination of all the quadrants that is your intraoral examination and your extraoral examination has been done that is when you have to look at the uh, next thing that is your diagnostic picture so before you make uh, start making the diagnostic cards you will have to make the diagnostic pictures which will definitely help you in uh, uh, having your records not only for your uh, for the patient's sake but also for your sake as as a record of what are the cases that you have been doing and then your diagnostic impressions that you would do with alternate impression material or you can also use a uh, elastomeric impression material you make your diagnostic cards and then after that uh, after the diagnostic cards have been done you would also uh, want to take a bite registration then mount it on a semi adjustable articulator and then you would follow uh, do the diagnostic wax up 
So uh, before this uh, and before sending your patient, so I'm sure uh, you will remember that you will have to do any uh, radiological examination as well. So if there are uh, any uh, caries or any condition that you want to examine in detail and see the underlying condition, so you will have to look at the radiographic film. So everything has to be uh, um, uh, kept aside and you will have to study them in detail. So based on what you have diagnosed and examining the cast in and out of occlusion, so what, uh, and uh, after that you come up with the conclusion, you, uh, you, you know what is the uh, uh, you know, a condition of the uh, oral cavity. So there might be certain general factors and certain local factors. So the general factors would be something like your age uh, and the uh, oral environment or maybe any med medical conditions that must be existing and uh, uh, like some, some, something like uh, diabetes or hypertension and also some local factors that is your uh, uh, occlusion and uh, the patient's oral hygiene. So these are the things which will decide and uh, uh, let, and give you a uh, give you a brief uh, uh, thought whether the patient has a poor pr uh, prognosis or a fair prognosis and what are the kind of treatment options that you can give. Next, uh, coming to your history. So uh, while speaking to the patient, the communication is the most important thing. You should understand the psych uh, uh, the psychology of the patient, the patient's mental attitude. You will have to look up uh, look at uh, how classic. Classification, MM house classification of the patient's mental attitude and uh, medical history is definitely has got prime importance. Uh, so any systemic condition will have uh, uh, oral manifestations as you would have learned in your year three. So if the patient is affected by diagnosis, uh, if di by diabetes, or if the patient is having a heart condition or any infection. Uh, infectious disease, uh, pacemaker, then uh, if the patient is uh, under chemotherapy or radiation therapy. So all of these, by, by if the patient uh, uh, gives you the detailed history, if the patient is agreeing to share about his medical history, then these are the things that you will have to look at. And this will definitely influence the uh, things that you're going to do at a later stage. That is something like your appointment, setting your appointment to the point where uh, you will have to, uh, um, to treat the patient. So in your uh, history, you can also rule out if the patient has any allergies and then what are the medications that the patient is using to see if there are any drug reactions. If the patient is hypertensive, then you have to, uh, if you are planning for an uh, extraction, then you would give a local anesthetic without adrenaline. And uh, if the patient has any cardiac prof, uh, problems, then you should also take a consent from the uh, physician that uh, the patient is fit for, uh, you know, the medical extra, uh, the dental procedure, extractions, etc. If the patient is uh, having any condition of epilepsy or any seizures that have been reported uh, recently, then you have to limit your appointment times and also make sure that you don't uh, the uh, the one thing that you will have to make sure is that flashing the light on and off on the patient so the light that you need to focus on the oral cavity by chance if you t tend to keep it more uh, on the patient's eye sometimes it might trigger uh, an epileptic uh, attack so that is what you will have to be cautious about and if the patient is uh, having a hypoglycemic condition so you you might anticipate uh, a condition of syncope or coma yeah and uh, also if the patient has zero stomia then there is a dry mouth condition and you can expect a poor prognosis because there is uh, they will be rapid or uncontrolled uh, so coming to your clinical examination in your clinical examination you would do a general examination see for facial asymmetry and uh, any swellings gross swellings any uh, wounds on the face uh, the face the skin the texture the face shape all of these, uh, the, the, the skin color, all of these have to be taken into consideration because all of these definitely have an indirect effect on what kind of processes that you are going to give. And next thing is your, uh, as a part of your extra oral examination in your uh, uh, general uh, examination, you would have, you would like to look at uh, the uh, TMJ, the head and neck, and then uh, you would evaluate the TMJ, then the muscles of mastication. So uh, once the extraoral examination has been completed, then you would do your intraoral examination. As a part of your intraoral examination, you must make sure that uh, 
the patient's oral hygiene status uh, has been revealed and on examination if you find that uh, if the patient uh, does not have good uh, oral hygiene then you must counsel the patient and uh, let them know the importance of uh, uh, regular uh, Uh, methods to keep the oral cavity clean and uh, examine the nature and quantity of saliva that the patient has if suppose you are taking giving a removable partial denture then the quantity of the saliva will definitely have an impact on the uh, retention of the dentures right and uh, next coming to the examination of the heart tissue so you have to examine each tooth and find out if there is any caries any pathological variation any anatomical changes then the kind of occlusion that is there and uh, also examine periodontium next coming to your radiographic evol uh, evaluation ideally when you are examining a patient for the first time and if if it is the patient's first dental visit then a complete mouth radiograph series will be needed that is uh, 14 uh, uh, iops and then four bite wings right and uh, if uh, you are suspecting any condition so that would be ideal uh, in case um, but with lesser exposure instead of uh, exposing the patient too much to radiation you can also uh, have a panoramic radiograph but you might miss out on a lot of details in your panoramic radiographs because there are more uh, uh, artifacts uh, or defects that you might see on your radiograph next coming to your temporomandibular joint radiograph uh, your tmj so if, if on palpit uh, palpation if the patient complains of any tenderness or any pain or and if you hear any crepitation sound on bimanual palpitation so that is when you would uh, require any tmj radiographs so all of these things uh, thing uh, clinical signs which cannot be evaluated or cannot be ruled out in clinical examination uh, but you if you are doubtful that there might be anything of that sort then definitely radiographic evaluation is the best way to uh, confirm what you are anticipating or you might suspect so uh, radiographic evaluation uh, Uh, helps in determining the remaining bone support if you plan for an implant uh, kind of a treatment bone support the bone quality then next you would uh, see the number of roots and uh, uh, the morphology that is uh, uh, involved the root morphology then uh, you would examine the periodontal ligament and uh, also uh, if there are any uh, conditions like trauma from occlusion then uh, check for uh, resorption then forcation involvement and if there are any caries lesions on the root surface the pulpal status peri uh, periapical pathologies uh, then any retained roots and then sometimes any small root uh, stumps that might be remaining might be submerged and the mucosa might cover it so that cannot be uh, found out in routine evaluation but it will be seen through uh, it, it it can be seen through your uh, radiographic examination then uh, calcification any uh, foreign bodies and oral manifestation of uh, then uh, oral manifestation of any systemic So once you have finished your radiographic uh, evaluation, then you make your diagnostic impressions. Yes, uh, either alginate your stock trace, then you should make good impressions without any voids. So before you show uh, your faculty the impression, whether if it is good enough or not, when you are having a look at the impression, you yourself must be able to evaluate whether the impression is good enough. That while pouring the cast, if you will be able to record all the details. Um, that is what you will have to evaluate before showing it to us so and uh, uh, so before uh, so if you can examine it then there will not be a need for us to give you more corrections but definitely please ensure that uh, once you have made an impression it has to be approved by any of the faculty and uh, yes once the impression has been obtained uh, and if you have made your impression with your alginate that is your primary impression which is the most uh, 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 less expensive option that we have it has to be poured immediately because you know that alginate has the capacity that it might shrink so it has to be poured with type 3 dental stone uh, and uh, so once your diagnostic cast uh, has been uh, obtained you need to examine your cast and ensure that all the teeth and the tissues uh, have been maintained properly and uh, the next thing is that you need to examine the uh, base thickness you have to uh, ensure that uh, you make a proper base the land area uh, so we want ideal cast 
so you uh, please ensure that before you show your diagnostic cars once you made your impression and bought the cars every cast that you make should have a proper base your base height would be uh, uh, 15 to 16 mm and then your land area the width of the land area should be around 3 to 4 mm so this is how your diagnostic cast should look like yeah so any blebs on the cast or any uh, uh, nodules everything has to be carefully examined and they have to be removed they have to be neatly polished with your sandpaper and you should have a base and also the width as you notice in this car in the lower in the lower picture the land area also has to be maintained and after that if you have obtained your uh, bike registration with the help of your interocclusal record you have to make a diagnostic mounting so uh, what are the uses of your diagnostic cast? So they help in giving you a preliminary information. See, your patient will not be uh, present with you throughout. So with, with when the, once the patient has moved out to see if you have missed out in any of the details. So uh, you, when you have a look at the cast, you will be able to examine the uh, uh, occlusion in a more detailed way. Then uh, the treatment procedures, uh, uh, that are uh, you know uh, that you're going to do you can just uh, definitely rehearse it on the stone cast before making any uh, changes if you're going to do mouth preparation for a cast partial denture so before you are going to attempt that on the patient you're going to first do that on the uh, cast and then you can proceed on the patient so and the next uh, thing is that uh, you are designing so if you're doing a, a removal partial designing uh, you know you can uh, draw the survey lines you can do your surveying and then uh, after that your uh, wax trial everything can be done on the uh, diagnostic cast and then if you're doing a full mouth rehabilitation then you can do a di uh, full mouth diagnostic wax up or if it is a uh, anterior uh, aesthetic replacement then the anterior teeth uh, wax up can be done yeah and uh, if you are replacing Im it's, uh, the missing teeth with implants a surgically uh, uh, guided stent can be uh, done on this particular cast so uh, which will be helpful in your surgical procedures Hel uh, so when uh, if the patient insists then why do you need to make an impression or if you are not doing the procedure why are you making the impression so you must be able to explain to the patient so uh, diagnostic wax up is one most important thing that uh, um, needs to be taken into consideration so uh, because your diagnostic wax up is the one which makes uh, you to understand how your final processes is going to look like before you are going to do the casting or before you are going to do the acrylization of the procedure or if you are going to do any definitive uh, processes like an implant or anything so uh, it not only helps you in having some information but this can be also shown to your uh, patient prior to beginning the procedure so that the patient will be satisfied about the outcome of the uh, treatment so uh, this is how your diagnostic wax up should look like on your mounted cast you can place artificial teeth the wax uh, uh, can be placed and you can uh, you can either do the uh, pattern waxes and show that this is how your fixed partial denture will look like and your crown would look like or otherwise if you're doing a, a removal partial denture uh, a base plate must be made or um, the base plate with the tooth and the wax uh, wax up which has been done has to be uh, completed and then shown to the patient explained to the patient and also you can do a, a trial if required so uh, so once you have show the patient has understood uh, by showing the diagnostic facts of the patient it, it, it helps the patient uh, to make a better choice uh, that you know this would be the best uh, kind of a treatment that the patient can have and already the patient is uh, aware of what are the changes that you're going to make so uh, the so the thing is the occlusion then uh, the the wax up that you have done the the how the final restoration is going to look like the the kind of changes that you're going to bring about everything is already there in your diagnostic wax up and next thing is that uh, um, you know it also provides certain uh, uh, information uh, and that, that that you can communicate not only to the patient but also to your technician as to what are the changes that you are going to do and uh, uh, how much of uh, reduction has to be done or what is the depth of the preparation that you will have to do. and next thing is developing treatment uh, options 
So once your diagnostic backup has been done and uh, uh, you know the diagnostic uh, casts have been shown and the patient has been educated of, about the different treatment options, the uh, while communicating to the patient, you should understand what are the patient uh, patient's expectations are. You should be able to communicate and let the patient know how realistic his prosthesis is going to look like and how uh, is the treatment going to be carried out because certain patients with, are, are definitely uh, um, very um, uh, uh, zealous for their treatment and some patients are uh, you know uh, demotivated they would not like the treatment but because somebody has insisted that come that all that that is all covered under your patients uh, under the classification of mm house the mental attitude and so you have different patients so while communicating to them you must be able to understand the patient's expectations as well and then uh, understand the patient's uh, emotional health sometimes they might not be in a state to understand uh, what is the kind of treatment that we are going to give and sometimes they might revert back to us and say that you know i never opted for a treatment like this or uh, after the treatment has been completed uh, the patient might say that i'm not satisfied with the trial so those are the things that you will have to uh, take in into take into consideration then uh, if the patient has any uh, systemic conditions so if the patient is diabetic or uh, hypertensive, then whether the diabetes is in under control, uh, if you're considering any surgical procedure, pre-prosthetic, as a part of your pre-prosthetic uh, uh, preparation, so uh, if there is uh, any medical condition, it might all, uh, require uh, additional uh, attention. So that is what, one more thing that you will have to take into consideration. Then the cost of the treatment, you have to explain in detail what is the cost that is involved in the treatment. And next thing is your uh, periodontal factors. Whether uh, if there is if the if there is any existing uh, uh, mobility or uh, any kind of uh, you know uh, what do we say like. Um, uh, gingival recession all of these things have to be seen and have to be explained so that also decides the prognosis of the patient the success rate has to be explained uh, because uh, some patients expect that once the tooth has been replaced it's going to stay for a lifetime uh, lifetime nothing lasts for a lifetime that is what everything has a lifespan so uh, no one uh, can live like forever right so uh, in, uh, that, that the same thing applies for your dental processes as well so it, it, it involves a lot of other factors that that is your local factors and your systemic factors so these are the things that you will have to take into consideration and you should explain what are the possible complications uh, that might come up that you know if uh, uh, while pr doing the procedure if there's any mishap then those are the thing things that you might anticipate based on different uh, uh, patient's uh, condition you must be able to explain to the patient and also uh, explain to the patient about the different appointments the number of appointments that are required each appointment how much time would be needed what are the procedures that and the procedure will be done by a student and not the faculty everything has to be explained to the patient sometimes the patient might not be uh, comfortable so if they are if they are un if they are uh, um, uh, avoiding or if they say that they do not want to get it done by uh, the student so in that case then you could suggest that the faculty can uh, do it then uh, next thing is uh, influence on the quality of life so you uh, if you know that the patient has a fair prognosis you should explain that the patient's uh, quality of life will be improved because you're not only uh, looking at form and appearance but you're also looking at the mastic so uh, these are all the things that you have to remember and uh, uh, you have to uh, explain to the patient and uh, study and consider. So to summarize, uh, every patient that you are going to deal with is just not a patient or some random person who is going to walk in uh, to your clinic. He should be treated with empathy as a human being and uh, so you should uh, and also you should understand that for any uh, um, prognosis for any good prognosis for a prosthesis uh, it is just not the uh, approach from a single uh, dental speciality but it is always a multidisciplinary team effort so if there is any need from the department of periodontics or from oral implantology or oral surgery 
or restorative dentistry, that is your conservative uh, dentistry. So any of this, if it requires any kind of an attention, then the patient has to be uh, referred to that particular department. And next thing is the key of having a successful dental case is the planning of the treatment before beginning the case. So before you begin the case, you should have on your mind what is going to be the outcome of that particular treatment plan. So once you have everything in mind, then definitely you will have a successful processes and the patient will be definitely satisfied. Uh, if you are, if you have failed in your diagnosis and treatment planning, if you have missed out on details during diagnosis uh, and in treatment planning, so you might end up in doing multiple visits or multiple appointments, which might sometimes uh, not be appreciated by the uh, patients and they might give you a bad review. So that is one more thing that you have to take into consideration. So these are the things that you have to learn about. I hope uh, uh, everything was clear. If you have any doubts, you can get back to me. Thank you.